Hello, this is part two of my um, video on my personal experience regarding astral projection. Uh, my name is JKC. And um, anyway, I was talking about my in my first video about how I accidentally even discovered I was doing this. And um, as I said before, I was doing this my entire life and not even realizing it. Um, Again, bear in mind, I am naturally a skeptic. Um, I looked for all the explanations for this. Um, I looked into, um, oh, you know, that it was just a dream, that somehow maybe I'm moving into my the right side of my brain and um, just dwelling there. Uh, hallucinations, um, hypno hypnagogic suggestions that I'm some kind of, tra I put myself in a, trance and I'm hallucinating um, or maybe I'm being exposed to um, electromagnetic fields or something that's causing me to hallucinate. Um, all my experience in which these happen, in which these things happened, I wasn't around any large electronic devices so I rolled that out immediately. Um, I'm not prone to hallucinate. I don't hear voices. I don't see ghosts or figures or anything like that. Um, but I've always had vivid dreams. And um, in light of my recent experiences with astral, astral projection, um, I have come to believe that um, many of the dreams um, are just ordinary dreams. And um, th there's a difference between that and the super HD, 3D digital surround sound, all five you know, all five uh, senses being used in the um, uh, astral projection type dreams. I believe that um, when I sleep, sometimes when I have these dreams, I'm literally going somewhere else. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and did not realize that this was what it was. And um, once I came to realize that I had that I was doing this, I set about and I I set about trying to do it and control it. In other words, actually set out, okay, I'm going to have an astral projection experience. How am I going to do this? So I read up on it, watched videos. I've done all sorts of things. I've tried, you know, candles, staring at candles and crazy things like that. I am not um, an overly religious person, but I, I do consider myself a Christian. And the biggest hurdle for me was getting past um, the fear of possession. Um, I, when I was a young child, um, I used to see ghosts, or what I thought were ghosts. Um, looking back on it now, perhaps I was just sensitive to seeing either other people astral projecting or possibly seeing spirits, but um, that went away when I got older. Um, I don't see them now. Um, occasionally I might see a shadow person or something, but that um, actually only happened to me when I lived in a certain place in the country, you know, and that was in the northern part of Arizona, and it occurs to me that there's a lot of iron in the ground and a lot of granite and things like that, and I think that that is conducive to allowing you to see into another dimension. I think there's a thinning of dimensions up there. I've read a lot of uh, stuff on, on dimensional travel and so on, and I came to believe that shadow people are inter interdimensional travelers. Um, they may also be spirits that are stuck in what I call the in-between, which is also some people call the intermediate zone or the astral zone. And um, that's some sort of area. It's maybe Catholics refer to it as purgatory, maybe, or limbo. And that's where you go before you go to heaven or hell. Um, as a Christian, I worry that if you astral project, that um, you're doing something against, you know, biblical law. Um, there really isn't anything in, in the Bible specifically mentioning astral travel. It does forbid, you know, looking at the zodiac. It does, you know, forbid, um, pr you know, prophesying and things like that. But it doesn't really mention astral travel. And I've looked. Um, part of me wonders if uh, the astral projection experience which has happened to me whether I wanted it to or not all my life if that's some sort of gift that is inherent in some people um, according to another video I saw recently um, as many as 20 percent of the American population does this and the worldwide um, that they're just able to do this um, you know that it's happening to you when you have when you hear a distinct buzzing noise and it's very loud like a chainsaw sometimes if you call it a vibration it feels like your whole entire body shaking at a high rate of speed um, me I feel it in my skull when it happens and then sometimes I've been able to pro astral project without feeling the buzzing sensation or the, the vibrating in my skull at all it just depends um, however 
for my pr purposes here, when I set out, and this was just last year in 2011, I actually set out to do an astral projection. I laid down, and it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. My son was asleep in his room, and everyone else was gone. And uh, I had the house to myself. I thought, well, you know, it's a good time. I won't be disturbed. So I laid down, and following the instructions, I put myself into a uh, sleep paralysis type trance. Now, this is not fully asleep. You lay down like you're going to go to sleep, but you use certain techniques to trick your body into going to sleep while your mind is still awake. And it took me many attempts to do this, but I finally managed to do it. And I've managed to do it once. I haven't been able to do it completely since then. But I think it's just a matter of, you know, continuing practice and, you know, trying. Um, but in the meantime, I did manage to successfully put myself into a, a um, the twilight sleep is what I call it, and in which my mind was awake, but my body was um, asleep. And you know, because you're unable to move your physical body. Um, and I, I did hear some of the what they call the rushing sound or sound of thunder that they th that they hear. I think that that's blood vessels pumping in your head when you're, and it's just like if you're, you hear it in your ears. I think that's what that noise is. But your heart rate all of a sudden picks up, and then you feel a tingling sensation. And then all of a sudden, you can feel yourself, if you go with it and relax and don't let it panic you, all of a sudden, you can feel a tingling sensation. And in this case, I was able to lift up my legs first. And I set them on the ground beside the bed, and all of a sudden, poof, I rolled out of my body. And I turned around, and I looked down, and I saw myself laying there. And I, again, was shocked by, you know, my appearance. You know, it's not the same face you see in the mirror when you're awake and you're looking in the mirror. It's You see yourself as you really are. I mean, you look at yourself as if you're another person. And But this time, I, you know, just rather than focus on that, I walked out of the bedroom. And I saw my son sitting in the living room. And I know he was asleep at the time. But it was my son, only he looked different. He had, my son is Native American, and um, he has short hair in real life, but in, in this experience, he had long hair. And um, he was talking to me, he goes, hey, what are you doing here? And I said, what are you doing here? And he says, I'm just dreaming. And I said, okay. And I said, is this real? And he goes, I think so. And I reached out and I said, shake my hand. I need to make sure this is real. i got to do a reality check. And so in, my, in this trance state that I was in, I reached out and I shook his hand, but I could feel it. And it's never happened to me in a regular dream before. That's how I do when I do this. It's You have to check to make sure it's not a dream. Because in a real, you know, a dream, your hands will go through things because it's not real. But in this, it was very real. Um, after I shook his hand, I could feel it feel his hand around mine and squeezing it and that's how I knew this is what it was and I think my son was astral projecting as well and I think he's been doing it all his life and he doesn't realize it and at that point I let go of his hand I turn around and I look toward my kitchen which uh, my living room and my kitchen are kind of connected it's kind of right behind me here and I saw a little boy standing there and I know him he also lives in our building here and I think he may have been sleep for a nap and I remember thinking this as this was happening that he was asleep as well and he's astral projecting and he's also a very smart precocious little boy and I believe that he you know he was astral projecting as well and he was just kind of looking at me and I ignored him and I walked out through the front door and then all of a sudden I took off and uh, I would go on and on describe the experience but um, it would take too much time but the trick of it was, was that I was able to do this. In part three of this video, and that will be the final part, I'll describe what exactly I did to get to this state. Um, some, it's, it's worked most times. I've been able to get to the threshold of it, um, to where I can feel myself start to separate. But again, because of the possession thing, and I worry about possession, and I worry about if it's against the laws of the Bible, that... Um, you know, that what I'm doing is wrong, and I worry that, you know, about demons and things like that. Um, that's been stopping me, I think, from astral projecting again for another, you know, another time. Um, I have to... I have to sit there and I have to read up a little bit more and talk about it, you know, with myself, pray on it, and see. Um, I think this is a gift. Um, it was not given to me by Satan. I believe it's a gift given to me by God. And I think um, that maybe there are things in the Bible that God doesn't want us to know about, and I think this is one of them, because people, if they're not, you know, if they're not disciplined, and if they don't, 
have a con self control that they could easily be given over to demon possession, especially when you're talking about spirit guides. Um, it's hard to tell in the astral plane if the person you're meeting there or the entity is good or bad. And if you're a bad judge of character when you're in the astral plane, you could let the wrong person, you know, enter your your enter your body. And um, but you can only this can only happen from what I understand if. Um, you allow it to. So anyway, I'll, in part three of the video, um, I will talk about how it was I achieved this. And then I'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, my current state of dealing with this now. So anyway, um, on to part three. Thank you. Bye-bye.